Hello there. My name is George Hurst. This program is on carving a standing moose on leather. The pattern we will use was taken from the Pictorial Carving Finesse book by Al Stolman. Many of the techniques used are featured in this book and in the figure carving book as well. The tracing pattern we will use in this video was taken from the finesse tracing patterns by Al Stolman. This pattern pack contains tracing patterns for most of the images in the figure and pictorial carving finesse books. Helpful information on carving and coloring a standing moose can be found in these publications. For this project, I'm using a piece of 8 to 9 ounce good quality vegetable tan cowhide. I will dampen it thoroughly front and back and set it aside for a few minutes until it begins to return to its natural color. My leather has uh, started to return to its natural color so I can start my tracing. You will notice that I have uh, traced my pattern to tracing film and I have taped it to the top of my piece so that I can lift it from time to time to check on my progress. So I will now, with my uh, tracing stylus, begin my tracing. First thing I'll do is trace one line and then I will lift it up and yes I can see it very well so this is deep enough. It's not necessary to trace real deep. Just deep enough so that you can see it. If you trace too deep you will, re you will create a sort of a ditch in your leather which will affect your swivel knife cutting so just deep just deep enough so that you can see it no deeper is necessary and very carefully trace all of the lines that you have on your pattern most of the lines are solid lines some of the lines are dotted lines you always trace dotted lines as dotted lines and solid lines as solid lines. Now there are situations where we will want to trace in a different manner like the folds that you see here. Uh, they are kind of cuts on a diagonal. So we will trace them in that manner so that when we cut our design we will know that these will be short diagonal cuts. You will notice here a few dotted lines. These dotted lines I'll trace as dotted lines and they will indicate where we're going to do some beveling. We'll have the same situation up here on the jawline. So we'll just trace those as dotted lines and we'll check and things are coming along just nicely. So we will continue our tracing very carefully. I'm going to do my swivel knife cutting with the new ergonomic uh, swivel knife and a one quarter inch angle ceramic blade. I prefer the thin one and I will, as always, strop it on a piece of uh, leather, in this case that's been treated with jeweler's rouge. I will begin my cutting with the antler that's closest to me. Uh, or in this case the foremost part of the pattern. Uh, with figure carving it's a good idea to cut foremost objects first. In this case I'm cutting the 
antler on the right side of the head because that's the closest to me. And uh, I'm cutting very carefully. And you'll notice now that this part of the antler is uh, closer to me than the antler on the left side of the head. So this is why I'm cutting this one first. Now we have a smaller part of the antler down here to cut. Very carefully. Notice that all of the cuts come toward my body. Now I can begin cutting the antler that's on the other side of the head. At the base of the antler, I've got some very short cuts. Now I've completed the cutting of the antler, and now I can start with the top of the head. Keep turning the leather, very carefully cut the mouth. As we get under, underneath the mouth and we start down to the beard, notice I'm now doing very short and very close together little cuts with the tip of the knife. And on the other side, we'll do the same thing. Very short cuts and very close together. Underneath the, the neck here, we'll do the same thing. Very short cuts and very close together. And uh, back of the the head, remember those cuts we made? These are a little bit longer and notice that the direction of the cut comes out and down. And they're, like I said, a little bit longer than the ones we did on the edge of the beard. The eye on a moose is very small and notice how I turn the knife, very carefully cut the upper lid. And the lower lid is cut very carefully, making sure we don't cut into the upper part of the eyelid. The nostril is kind of cut the same way. Notice how I turn the knife to achieve the sharp curves down at the bottom. And now I will continue cutting. In this case, I'm cutting mostly straight lines, or shall I say solid, shall I say solid lines.
being very careful to stay on the line, especially down here in the legs, where if we get off the line, we will end up with a leg that does not look right. So continue cutting as indicated on your tracing pattern. And this is how our moose looks after we have done all of the swivel knife cutting. We'll now begin our beveling and to do that we're going to use mostly uh, five different bevelers. We've got a B936 and B702 which are a small and medium size checkered beveler. We'll use three figure carving bevelers F896, F895, and F910, which is a pointed figure beveler with parallel lines on it. We will start with the larger of the two checkered beveler. Now we're going to use this all around the outside of the perimeter. Uh, this is because we will be doing uh, matting around the moose, so we want to get a little more texture than we would on other parts. So we will use the checkered beveler to do this. Also because there is uh, a lot of texture on the moose itself, we will use it where the antler comes over the head. We will go all around the antler where it's on the outside of the moose. And in these areas where it's antler on antler, we'll come back with the smooth beveler. But for now, I want to bevel completely around the outside of the animal. in the area down here where there is a sharp inside curve and it's uh, on the background I will use the very small B936 beveler and notice that when I'm using this beveler I do not hit nearly as hard. Being small it's quite a bit sharper and if we hit too hard will go completely through the thickness of the leather.